Um, hi, my name is Lake. Um, I'll be talking about breaking contrastive models for the sets card game. This project is motivated by a particular failure mode of clip. Consider this text prompt, which asks for a red cube on top of a green cube on top of a blue cube. The image forms a natural pairing with the text. If I shuffle the colors in both the image and the text, I get another pairing. If I continue this procedure to generate all six pairings of texts and images and feed them into CLIP, I'd expect CLIP to predict a six by six logits matrix with a strong diagonal. But the logits predicted are actually quite even. It seems that when there are multiple entities, relations, and attributes, CLIP struggles. My intuition for why this happens has to do with the dot product retrieval layer between query and key representation vectors in standard contrastive models. We can view this layer as performing linear classification in which a linear boundary Q is encoded to separate the key data points. Under this perspective, the VC dimension limitation applies. Suppose we have six keys. One query may match with three of them as positive keys. But there are actually two to the power of six number of ways to assign some keys as positive and the others as negative, as long as our hypothesis class can throw all two to the power of six number of queries at the keys. This is the idea of shattering. In general, if our queries are limited by the vector dimension D, the VC theory states that they cannot match with all possible subsets of D plus one keys. In data sets like ImageNet, there are only a thousand labels in the contrastive model setup, this corresponds to a thousand static queries. For example, match all the docs. So model performance is far from hitting the limits imposed by the vector VC dimensions. But on data sets like Clever, many dynamic queries can be formed, such as identifying all the scenes with one or more blue objects. Here, we need to subset the scenes in many dynamic ways, so we may hit the limit imposed by the vector's VC dimension. I also have a secondary intuition that's related to the poor approximation of full rank query key matrices using vectors that are shorter than the rank. Feel free to ask me about it. To validate my intuitions, I set up two architectures. One is a contrastive model, which encodes queries and keys separately and score the compatibility using the dot product retrieval layer. The other is a non-contrastive model, which scores each query key pair as a continuous sequence. The contrastive model uses an eight layer transformer to encode the query symbols and an embedding lookup to encode the key symbols. While the non-contrastive model uses a four layer transformer to encode the concatenated query key symbols. The contrastive model has 70 million parameters, while the non-contrastive model has only half of that. My experiment goal is to show that contrastive models with limited vector representation dimensions are worse than non-contrastive models that uses half the parameters. Task-wise, I borrowed the well-known sets card game. It suits my purpose because of some, some nice extendable properties. Each card has multiple attributes and possible values per attributes. These dimensions are scalable. Any pairs of cards can form a query that evaluates the key card. In a complete set of three cards, on any attribute, the cards either have to be the same or all different. This query key matrix has a regular pattern, but it is still full rank. To extend this game, I introduced the star regular expressions such that queries can evaluate to subsets of key cards. In addition, I introduced the set union and symmetric difference operators to make the queries and return subsets even more dynamic. I'm going to show an example game and how the models would play it. Here's a deck of 27 cards, each with three attributes and three possible values per attribute. Each query has eight pairs of cards and set union operators between them. Depending on the query, the matching subset of keys and its size vary. This particular query returns 13 matching positive keys. A different query may return a different, smaller or larger subset of keys, such as three or 21. A training example is a tuple of query symbols and a key symbol sampled from the matching positive key. 
We can sample different queries and their keys this way to make a batch. The contrasted model uses the info NCE training objective, which normalizes the dot product over all the query key pairings in this batch size by batch size query key matrix. The scores are penalized across both columns and rows. The non-contrasted model uses a conventional cross entropy objective. The scores are penalized across keys in the support. At test time, the models are given queries such as this one, and they score the compatibility of this query with each of the 27 keys. There are 13 ground truth keys for this query. So one crude metric is to measure how much the top 13 predictions overlap with the 13 ground truth keys. I call this metric the top K prediction ground truth overlap for now. A more sensitive metric is to compare the KL divergence between the normalized predicted scores and a ground truth distribution constructed from dividing one among all the ground truth keys evenly. Putting all of this together, I have seven contrastive models with vector representation dimension from 512 down to four. They all have 70 million parameters and a non-contrastive model with half the size. I have five different games that are based on a 27 card deck from the sets game in its original form to the aforementioned extensions and a final game of shattering 27 numbers. They have increasing levels of difficulties characterized by the respective total number of unique key subsets the queries should separate. I tried each game on all the models. Here's a results plot. On the y-axis, we have KL divergence loss. On the x-axis, we have those five games ordered from left to right with increasing levels of difficulty measured by the total number of key subsets the queries should separate in powers of two. The first game is the original set. It requires the queries to separate two to the power of 4.57 subsets of keys. All the models did very well. The second game includes a star regular expression and requires the queries to separate two to the power of six number subsets of keys. So the contrastive model with vector dimension four starts to do poorly. As we introduce a set union and symmetric difference operators, the models need to separate between two to the power 21 and 23 subsets of keys. So the contrastive models with vector dimension eight to 20 also do worse and worse. Finally, on shattering 27 numbers, the model needs to satisfy a VC dimension of at least 27. So all the models with vector dimensions less than 27 fails to varying extents. Notice that throughout these games, the contrastive model models with vector dimension 5, 12, 27, and the non-contrastive model with half the parameters performed consistently well. The top K overlap metric shows a similar agreeing trend. Here, higher is better, so the plot looks like the KL loss plot flipped upside down. To understand why the models with shorter vector representations are worse, I zoomed into one game for some analysis. This is a representative query from erroneous predictions. It matches with 13 ground truth positive keys and 14 ground truth negative keys. The perfect model normalizes the dot products and distributes the probability mass evenly among the positive keys and nothing among the negative keys. The contrastive model with vector representation dimension 5, 12, and 27 are not far from perfect. But if we drop the dimension to 20 or below, we start to see mass moving to the negative keys until the dimension 4, which performs about the same as a completely even distribution. It seems that as we drop the vector representation dimension, the model becomes less able to develop a preference among the keys. Using entropy of predictions as a measure of this phenomenon, what we saw from a previous example can generalize to all the queries that matches with 10 to positive ground truth positive key cards. The entropy of predictions increases as vector dimension decreases. Notice that queries in this game return, to, return up to two to the power 21 subsets of keys and starting with dimension 20, entropy grows more dramatically. This trend is also reflected in the aggregate of all queries in the test sets. These entropies are increasingly 
uh, or monotonically uh, as vector dimension decreases. In addition to this 27 card version, I also trained an 81 card version of this particular game. The setup is similar. The contrastive models range from vector representation dimension 512 down to 16, all around 17 million parameters. The non-contrastive model is half the size. Here are the plots. The trends are similar. KL loss decreases as the vector dimension increases and top K overlap uh, metric increases with the vector dimension. Notice that the game has 81 cards. So in theory, with a vector dimension of 81 or above, we should be able to solve this game perfectly. And we do see some agreeing trends here. Here are a few things I learned from training these models. More difficult games require more gentle learning rate schedules. Cosine schedules help to unstuck models from local minima in some cases. Efficiency of conversions depends on initialization schemes. Using dot products instead of cosine similarity and, uh, and temperature works better for this data. Overall, I think these observations are more specific to the nature of this synthetic game than contrastive models. Uh, besides what I just told you, I also worked on uh, some adjacent topics during the past six months. They include uh, variable binding, in which I did some literature reviews on tensor products, and a study of uh, Dolly and, and Clips failure modes. And then I looked at a point mutual information for classification, specifically comparing the info NCE versus the cross entropy uh, objective for zero shot classification on toy problems. And I looked at uh, various uh, versions of game rules and operators and observed that um, the, rank the rank of their query key distribution matrices changes. Um, finally, I want to uh, thank you for listening and also uh, thank my mentor, Gabe, for giving me a lot of valuable guidances and, and feedback in, in these six months. Um, and and I'll be, update, I'll, I'll be updating my blog over the weekend um, with, the, uh, with, the final, with the final blog post. So feel free to check it out next week. Also feel free to contact me for uh, further questions. So now I'll look over uh, to the Q&A for, for questions. Um, so there is a question on, uh, on the intuition uh, behind entropy going up as the embedding dimension goes down. And so, let's see. Let me go to the... So uh, from the error analysis that I saw, I saw that um, as the vector dimension goes down, the, the, vector side, the vectors themselves become less able to encode enough signals that allow them to uh, kind of separate the, the different keys. Um, but I would be curious to, to do more investigation on that front. But in general, the observation is that as the vector dimension goes down, um, the models become less and less able to develop a preference among the keys. Um, and then, um, so there's a question on the intuition on rank. Uh, let me also go to the corresponding slide. So the intuition is that if our query key matrix it has rank, uh, has a, is full ranked. So in this case, if I have uh, if I have less keys than my queries, this full rank matrix would have the rank equal to the support of the keys. Uh, let's say 27. And if my, um, if my vector representation sizes are less than 27, when I uh, take dot products between my queries and keys, it's mathematically equivalent to doing a matrix multiplication of the keys matrix that uh, has size uh, uh, support keys uh, by, by a, a number that's less than support size of keys. Um, with the query matrix that has a dimension that uh, on the on the one dimension that's less than support of keys and the other being the support of queries. 
So these vectors are, are shorter than the, than the full rank 27. And so, um, so when we do a matrix multiplication between these two matrices, the, um, uh, the, the M prime matrix is not going to be full rank. It would have at, at most the rank of, uh, of the, whatever the, the vector representation dimension is. Um, and then there is also a question of if the non-contrastive, uh, oh, so I, I see that my time is up. So I'm gonna uh, uh, hand the time over to Sam and uh, look at the, look at the, the third Q&A question offline and, and make a reply.